Good morning, everyone. This is Brandon Krieger and Monty. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about how to use encryption. So cybersecurity for you and your business. Episode number 18. We've made it this far. 18 episodes, Monty. Wow, cool. It looks like we're uh, just rolling right along, you know? Good oh, time. I know. It's Good. amazing. It's amazing that, you know, how we've evolved from, you know, kind of talking about, you know, basic security and all that. And now we're going to topic specific and just the amount of information that's out there. Uh, and I know that even with this topic, talking about encryption, the amount of research that you and I both have had to do to come up with the knowledge base that we're going to be able to cover just a, a, a snippet of it for like the hour. Yeah, you guys have to really keep in mind that we're, um, we, we have we have this laundry list that we start off with, right? And, and then as we work our way into the various topics, well, guess what? Each of those particular topics, you can really spend a lot of time in uh, individually. So we want you guys to take a look at the articles and the videos, talk to Brandon, consult with him about how to actually implement and execute so that you can take advantage of the very specific items that we're talking about. Well, because think of in the high level topics, they're about an inch wide, right? When they talk <laughs> about physical security is an inch wide. But when you go into it, it's about a mile to two miles deep. Right when you finally go into and start to look at it, so like you look at network security, physical security, you know, cyber security, Internet of Things security, you know, social engineering or uh, people hacking, those when you kind of look at the high level, it's only you know an inch wide, right? That's as wide as the high level topics. But when you dive deep into them, like we do, they're a mile deep where there's so much information and it changes. Exactly, and so what what we, we're, yeah, what we're really talking about is a mindset. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a change in the way that we think about, you know, how we manage information. What is the government's, government's responsibility? What is our responsibility? So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's something that, that really is not openly discussed as, as in terms of the way it should be. So, yeah, we have to change the way we think. And that, that, that means uh, it's a little bit more complex and it's not something you just take off the shelf and throw into you know the, the way the way the way you operate at the company or whatever and now all of a sudden everything's going to be fantastic you know we, we need to make sure that everyone is aware of the fact that these that these that, that we need to think about um uh, how we do the things that we do on a daily basis a little bit differently oh exactly now monty how was your week how was your past week since we last ha had episode 17. Well, the, the week was um was a, was a good week there wasn't a whole lot going on you know i um I'm making a lot of progress at the gym. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm somehow managing, even at my age, I'm managing to to um, impress myself with, with what I'm doing in the gym. And then that's Fridays, right? And then Saturdays, I have to recuperate from that. And then Sundays, I, I do a five-mile walk we talked about last weekend. And, and then I fast at the same time, you guys. And when, believe it or not, when you fast, liquid only and and then you also do your you know your exercise in my case a five mile walk it really you really get so much more out of it so you to try it sometimes you guys and see what happens <laughs> and, and then 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 monday then i have to recuperate from that you know right so, <laughs> what about you well it was interesting this week was kind of cool for me because i was at um uh caa uh, buying movie tickets because I wanted to go see uh, Civil War, the uh, Avengers the new movie. Yeah, it's oh, sorry, Captain, Captain America. Okay. And what happened was we were sitting in line and my girlfriend was looking at CAA and she was looking at all these bags. And she started to pick up a bag and the, uh, the older lady behind us said, make sure there's a zipper on the bag. So yeah. me going, okay, hold on. Let's kind of find out where this is going to go. Right. Right, so I said, oh, why, why are you asking about a zipper? She goes, you know what? I had my, my I was robbed. The other day, someone reached in my purse, right? Socially engineered me, reached into my purse and pickpocketed me. And luckily, the store that I was in, it was a, I think it was a cafe or a diner, the manager saw all this happening and let me know. She goes, but if I didn't know, there was like $700 in my wallet. And I, and I was like, oh, well, let you know, you know, I'm a cybersecurity consultant. And I, you know, one of the areas that we talk about is security awareness. And she's like, yeah, you know, I never would have thought, you know, it would be an issue in Toronto. I never thought, like, if you go over to Europe, you go over to these other areas, yeah, you kind of, they warn you as you're traveling, make sure you have your purse, or your bag, clothes, and type it to you because someone could, you know, distract you or try to pickpocket you. And they said the way the person did it was they sat behind her, they draped over like a sweater, 
Yeah, they reached into her bag, they picked out the wallet, and then they, they took the sweater at the same time and they walked away. Right. right. But the, what happened was the manager saw them, so they dropped it and they, and they took off. She said, you know, it was lucky that the manager did see them that this was happening. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and this goes back down to, you know, what we're talking about is security awareness is about all areas of security. It's not just that, yes, I have computer security. My computer, my laptop is secure. I have encryption. I have this. I have, you know, a good password. It's secure. But if you're at Starbucks and someone's shoulder surfing and they're looking over your shoulder as you're typing in your password, there goes your security. So it's having that security okay. awareness of all areas because we can get compromised in any different way. So it was just a reminder, right, to keep educating people that security awareness is not just one thing. It's all encompassing of all different areas. Yeah, you really can't uh, emphasize that enough because when you lock down your, as Brandon pointed out, when you lock down your, your hardware, you know, you can have uh, top-notch encryption on your cell phones. I used to sell cell phones uh, five grand a piece. Um, and, uh, or was it five grand for two? But at least five grand investment just for two, minimum, okay? So, unfortunately, this is the good news. The, the good news is the, the hardware was very secure. And because these were dedicated phones, they were very, very difficult, almost impossible. Pretty much they had a cert certification and everything. So you could, so we could rely upon that encryption. But unfortunately, if I'm talking in an environment where everyone can listen or if someone bugs my office or whatever, right? Now I compromise everything that I spent so much money on. So yeah, we have to keep in mind that uh, with, with the hardware uh, being perfect or whatever, in, in the case of Apple's iPhones, the, the 5C or whichever one they compromised in San Bernardino, that was a very good phone, right? But but unfortunately, the software had a vulnerability, okay? And so, yeah, we need to take a look at how all these things fit together. And, and we're going to be covering the interactions between you know the operating systems of the world and then the hardware units and the uh, software that runs them the network that they set up on and then the users that ultimately implement the, make make all this fit together and hopefully work right because as a user if i don't turn it on and use it <laughs> then of course who cares how much my boss spent on it how much i spent on it exactly and that comes down to kind of security awareness training where you have to train the tech people, your company, your VPs, all the way down, top-down approach, CEO, all the way down to your janitor, right? Your family, your friends. It's a full 360 approach where it's not just one area because any area can be compromised. Right? And that's why, you know, I'm going around now doing security awareness training. And I mean, uh, this week, and kind of to close off what I did this week, I set up a, just a, a good easy gig for you know on, on fiverr for five dollars where people can do a half an hour consultation because my goal is not just the point of you know revenue model making money and, and profiting is to get this knowledge out there as much as i can because it's the people that we know that get compromised the people that you know we uh go to dinner with our family our friends our colleagues our clients right these are the people that get compromised so quickly because security is third, fourth, fifth down the line of their thought process. And they're busy. They're working. They got the kids. They got, you know, soccer practice. They got this report and this project they have to do. And they're not, not thinking about security. And they do something that all of a sudden compromises them. They do their banking at Starbucks. They, you know, talk about some financial information in an open public, you know, oh, yeah, you know, John, my client, he's a jerk, right? And they compromise John's business because all of a sudden someone – around them here is that, oh, are you talking about John from XYZ company? And that's what the person's thinking. He might not say something, but exactly. now he takes that information and goes back to John and say, hey, John, you know, are you working with a, a vendor or supplier, you know, that looks like this? Oh, yeah. Well, he's saying you're a jerk. Oh, what do we mean? Well, then all of a sudden you get fired. So there's, right. there's data breaches, there's espionage, there's information leakage. I mean, all this is security. It's just understanding the, the, the grasp of it, especially when it comes to social media, when someone goes out and says, hey, Monty, you know, I don't like your encrypted phones. They're terrible. I was able to hack it. Here's the white paper. And you're like, oh, my God, 
you know, how, what happened, right? <laughs> and that information goes out. Might might be true, might not be, but now that that information is out there, now you have to go out. Now you have to secure your data, your information, and make sure when you do a public release now saying, no, that was false. We have actually been certified, and here's the encryption, and here we've tested it, and this is what it is. So, I mean, we're looking at all different areas of security, and that's why, you know, today is a great topic to talk about encryption because encryption is so important to protect your data, right, to protect the information. So, Monty, you, I mean, you did a lot of research. What what did you find? Like, what is encryption? Well, encryption is almost synonymous with um, uh, a few things. When I think about encryption, I, it, it really brings to mind um, privacy, protection of data. Uh, it, it talks about uh, what cryptographers typically are trying to accomplish. So, see, 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 you guys, make sure you understand that when we talk about encryption, we can be very, very technical, you know, in terms of what particular algorithms are going to be used or not, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we can we can bring it home and say, look, uh, for, for as an example, uh, my data uh, in, in a database, and, and, I, and I, as, as an employee of the Office of Personnel Management, it's, it's very important that that be protected because if that gets hacked into like it was, and we got 21.5 million records that were stolen, and now they're in the hand of the, the hands of the Chinese or the Russians. Now that's a that's a significant issue that hits home. Now re that resonates, right? We can relate to that. So when we talk about how that could have been prevented, could, then, then we then we talk about encryption. Now we need to say why was that data not encrypted? Because it wasn't, right? That's why that 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 story resonates with most everyone in the United States because now we understand my security clearances, my background checks, my fingerprints, my, my um, uh, personal testimony for human resource, whatever it was, all that goes out the door. And so you don't get that back. Once it's gone, it's gone, right? Mm -hmm. So when I think about encryption, I think about my personal information that really should be stored in such a way so as to discourage you from not even going after it because if you get it, it's encrypted and you can't use it. So that, to me, that that that's the that's that that's what really strikes home with me, my friend. Nice. Okay, let's kind of go through the definition so everyone's on this kind of same page. Encryption is the most effective way to achieve data security. Uh, to read an encrypted file, you must have access to a sec uh, secret key or password that enables you to decrypt it. Uh, unencrypted data is called plain text. Encrypted data is referred to as cipher text. So just so because we're on the same page, so as we're starting to talk about terms, everyone that, you know that's watching this can share this out. And, and as well as you're going through your day-to-day, -day, maybe you're talking to the IT guy and they're saying encrypting, you go, ah, okay, now I know what they're talking about. So that's the base kind of you know definition of what encryption is all about, is that you're using some tool to secure your data that you use maybe a passphrase or security passcode that you use that now secures that data that only be, now can be encrypted or encrypted or decrypted by that using that code by using a software that you have and using that code to now un decrypt it. Now you have access to read the, the the plain text data. So it's just so we're on the same page as we're talking about. Because some people might go, okay, well I encrypt it by you know putting in a folder. I encrypt it by, you know, putting on a different hard drive. I do that. Encrypt, being encrypted means that there's a data program that actually secures it and decide, or deciphers it or decrypts it or cipher texts it in a way that now there's a level of encryption on it. So there can be, you know, 256, 128, 512-bit uh, encryption. So it's the long keys. The bits are long. So that's what we're looking at size of data of how much it is using to encrypt it. And what happens that security now makes sure that, you, you know, it's harder for someone to break into. Now, something I was reading as we're going through this is can encryption be, be broken into? Yes, it can over time, right? As well as yes, it can, depending on how secure your passphrase is. If your passphrase is, is 1234, your level of encryption, your level of security is lower. If your password is 
16 characters, special characters, capitals, you know, it's something that is just very hard. Now your encryption is harder to, to crack into. So you got to think of that as you're using these encryption tools. So what do you think, Monty? Well, that, you know, you, you, you really touched on um, exactly with it, with it, with the, uh, where we need to start as, as far as the foundation, because when, when we know that we need to start with encryption, first of all, and, 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 and I wish it could be such that when we turn on our phones, uh, when we start up our computers and such, that the default, and we talked about the wireless routers of the world coming out of the retailer store with uh, admin and, 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 and password mm -hmm. as the initial username and passwords, right? Well, that, well, unfortunately, that's a compromise. That's a built-in vulnerability. And we, we, need, we need to make absolutely sure we understand that we, we, we're, we're not doing ourselves any favor, okay? So we, we need to turn on, as Brandon talked about, and, 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 and use very good um, uh, passwords, okay? Numbers and letters, and if someone gives you the option of, of having a, a, a character length or a passphrase that's uh, 16 characters and numbers and, 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 and such, you need to you know consider using that. And I see a lot of the uh, dialogue boxes, if you will, are stating at what point are you weak or medium or strong in terms of you know what you chose as a password. And by the way, passwords should not be the dog's name, my, my, my mother's maiden name, or, or some street that I was born on or something. Um, we, we typically uh, want to use something that I can't even remember. Now, there are some personal preferences in terms of whether or not you want to use a master password for every single social networking site or something, or whether or not I want to use a single one for each individual, right? So, yeah, we need to keep that in mind as well. But make sure that you choose something that's very, very uh, uh, difficult, even for you, okay? And then that you should, and th in this day and age, Monty, I'm going to kind of address that right, right from the start because I don't want people to think that they should have a master of God password. Right, one that gets them into everything. In this day and age, you need to have a password that you cannot remember. There if you, you can remember, it's common. It's something that you, like Monty's saying, your dog's name, your dog's date of birth, an anniversary date, your mother's made a name, anything like that. That can be socially engineered over time to be able to decompromise. I can, as a hacker and as an ethical hacker, I can go and profile you through your friends, your family, your social sites, Right, finding information about you. And here's just a, a small personal hack. I could call one of your friends and say, hey, you know what? I'm John, I'm one of our friends from work. Guess what, we're having a surprise party. We just wanna confirm her exact date of birth. They're gonna go, oh yeah, John from work. Okay, yeah, for sure, here you go. This is her exact date of birth. Bingo, I've got it. Now maybe I'll call another friend and ask what's your what's your anniversary? You know, if I know that you're married or whatever, I can ask your anniversary. So I can start creating a profile of what now to test. So now I know your date of birth. Now I know your anniversary. I know, you know, maybe watching Facebook, I know when you did get a birthday for your dog and your dog's name. I can do this, I can create a profile now that I can compromise it. And we're going back to the encryption. If those passwords now are in your secure data, now if I capture your data from sniffing you know, the network or doing like that, and I capture that data. Now, because I have this profile on you, it's easy for me to compromise that data. It's easy for me to compromise that secure file. But if you use it something you don't use, something that you're not familiar with, like, like Monty's saying, 16 character long, something very unique that you've written in a notebook or maybe on a secure USB, that now you've, you have another password for that, where it's all separate passwords. And that you have to plug that in and use that text file to be able to, you know, unencrypt it or unencrypt the file and unencrypt any of your sites or whatever that may be. That's your level of security. Yes, it's time consuming. It's a little bit of hassle, but the more hassle it is for you, it's ten times the hassle for a hacker. Yeah, exactly. That's um, that's exactly what we're up against. See, we want convenience, right? We we want to be able to get into the turn the phone on, turn the laptop on, open it up, 
immediately start working and get to work and not and not worry about it. And, and ideally, see, one, one day we'll probably get security and get encryption and everything built into the, our gadgets, right? And, and, and so that upon execution or upon turning on, maybe all, all these things will take place. But we're, we haven't quite gotten there. We, we, we're not there yet. See, way back in the day, we had a, there was a gentleman by the name of Phil Zimmerman, I think his name was, and he I think he had been had been at PGP, a pretty good privacy, and yeah, okay. um, you practically had to be a programmer in order to it, 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 what he wanted to do was he wanted to encrypt our emails, and he said, look, you know you're going to execute this program, and then you're going to install this thing, and it's going to uh, encrypt your emails, and then Brandon would have a, a, a public key or, or on his side and they would recognize each other and the emails would go back and forth and they would be encrypted no one would know what we're doing right but people looked at the sophistication and the complexity of that particular implementation and they said no thank you you know it's just a good idea i'm glad you came out with it but you know it takes too much time right so so now we fast forward to where we are now we're, we're, we're getting a little bit better and making sure that it's plug and play and, and, and it's and it's very quick and grandma and mom everyone can, can use it and it's not a big deal it takes place in the background right ideally but we're not there yet so remember if it's a little bit of a hassle for you then it's probably going to be a little bit more of a hassle for the hackers and the other guys who want to get that information so try mm -hmm. to keep in mind that if it's too easy and it's too simple for you to 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 send me a message, send me an email, talk to me, and if you want some 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 modicum of, of privacy, modicum of privacy, then it, then it, it, there should be a few steps involved, hopefully. And this is what we come back down to the CIA of security: confidentiality, data integrity, and availability. So we're talking about confidentiality, securing your data, making sure it's confidential. Data integrity is making sure that the the data can't be breached or leaked out. So what happens is why we're encrypting is to secure your data. Now this could be anything from your kids' photos to financial documents and information that you know are for your business and your investments, whatever that may be. So you've got the skill of it that you might want to look at, you know, making confidential, right? And having the integrity that it's not going to get breached and, and shared out and the information is going to be, you know, protected to yourself. And then what Monty's saying, which I agree, is that the challenges that yin and yang we're having is availability. Right? People want things instantly. They want it now. I don't want to take another step that takes me two seconds to be able to do that because I want it now, I want it now, I want it now. But what happens when someone breaches that, then they want it secure. No, 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 I want it secure. I want to be as much layers of security as I can, but I still want it available now. So this is where you kind of get this you know, push and pull kind of uh, strat uh, struggle right now when it comes to security is because we know as security experts, as we know that if you want to have layers of security, you have to take steps to get access to it. It's like a vault, right? Yep. When you have a bank, you go into the secure door, you open the door, then there's the bars, right? And then you open the bars, and then you go in the vault and you do the dial, then you get in and there now you're in. So you go through these layers of security to get to, the, to you know your data, to get to the prize. Well, why aren't we doing that with data, our data? Exactly, I mean, the, the thing that's most important to us we, we, we want to take it for granted, right? And I'll give you a good example. And that analogy going to the vault is a very good one. And another one might be the, the, our retirement accounts, right? Mm -hmm. if, if my retirement account is put away and the government says, you know what? I'm going to penalize you severely if you go, into, go, go get your retirement money and you want to go spend it on a big screen TV, right? I'm going to, I'm going to call the, the company that manages my IRA or 401k. I'm going to say, you know, I think about getting a big screen TV. They're going to say, you know what? You better think about it because the government's going to take 30% and you're going to file this paperwork and blah, 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 right? So right. You're going to do something. Hold on. I'll, let me, or I'll call you back in a couple of days or something, right? So the time that you're buying yourself is probably exactly what you need to, 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 to think through the process. So right. through our data, let's change our mindset. So let's think about... Um, how many steps do I have to go through or, 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 and someone else is going to have to go through those steps as well? Because believe it or not, there was a very good case of a journalist, I think we talked about it in one of the last blabs. He volunteered to have the hackers at a DEF CON convention hack into his Verizon account live. And what yeah. happened was 
he exercised all of the necessary suggestions and, and took all the good advice that we talk about here. But what happened was the hackers called the phone company and compromised his account using made up information pretending to be his wife, for instance. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he got, uh, you know, user, username, password, put a different password on the account so the guy couldn't get into his own original account. Um, he, they were going to buy some phones in his name. I mean, it could have it it gone on and on and on. So we need to make sure we understand all of these things are interconnected. And if I do a fantastic job, just me and my security, my business, my personal life, I need to consider also what, it, what, what are the various vendors and suppliers and the people that I work with, what are they doing as well? So it's, it's a mindset uh, change that we need to look at. It's, it's that connection of that web. I mean, the web of security is, like you said, there's, it branches out. It's not just that immediate network, that immediate, immediate people that you know uh, in your day-to-day -day life that you work with, your family, your friends. It could be their family and friends. It could be their clients. It could be a business partner you're working with or, or just someone you went for lunch with. But their clients are getting compromised. And because now they get compromised, they, you know, the clients get compromised, your business friend get compromised, and potentially it can it trickle over to you getting compromised. So that's why, I mean, we're taking this level of training and, and information is, you know, protect yourself and make sure that data encryption right, is used, right? Um, let's kind of go through. I got some questions here that, you know, I just kind of wrote down. Okay. So how, how does encryption work? You know, Monty, you know, you've been using encryption for quite some time. How does it actually work? So I know some of our analytical guys that are watching this are going to kind of go, okay, you know, tell us how it actually works. Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, my, my expertise basically doesn't get as technical, or, but but I can tell you this: we want to know, we want to quantify this, so to speak, from 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 our perspective uh, when we sell hardware, for instance. And a lot of times, what we look at, Brandon, is we look at how much time are you going to expend in terms of computing power mm -hmm. and man hours. If I if I have, for instance, an algorithm that is so complex um, that it's going to take you most of the computational power of most of the computers that we have in existence in, in, a, in a thousand man years, then then we know that more than likely we have very very good encryption, right? Because as, as we again as we talked about before, we have these bounty programs where where someone pays hackers and pays outsiders and such to to break in or compromise. Are, are perceived um, very, very secure algorithms that we're using for security. So I, I like to think of it in terms of, without going into too much in the details, I think Brandon can do that himself, <laughs> without going into too much of the details, I can say, look, if, 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 you, can, if you can have an encryption algorithm that's literally rated in, in, in terms of man years, you know, like a thousand years or something, and all the computational power of, of all the computers that we have in existence, including supercomputers, then pro probably we have a very good opportunity to protect data and protect our privacy. Oh, exactly. Now, one of the definitions I found online was encryption works by scrambling the original message with a very large digital number. They, and as we refer to that number, is a key, right? This is done using advanced mathematics. Uh, commercial level encryption uses 120 bit, uh, 20, 128 bit key that is very, very hard to crack. The computer re receiving the message knows the digital key and so is able to work out the original message. So that's where we have like uh, private key, public key, and that data is encrypted by mathematical equations that now through that, you know, algorithm makes that data skewed so you can't just read it in plain text. That's kind of what they're saying right now. And then what happens is you get a private key is the one that initially creates it, right? creates the security, creates the encryption. And then you generally get a public key that you share to the people that you want to access that encrypted file. So that public key, and you never share your, your private key. That is something that's yours and yours alone. But when you want people to access it, you share your public key, your public information, your password. So what happens is they, the users that you want to be able to have access to it they can go into it. And what, what you want to do is you want to protect that public key to only people that you want to have access. All right. So you make sure when you share it out is that, you know, it's clients, colleagues, friends, family members, all that, that only get access. And with a waiver that 
do not share this out. Do not post it on social media. Do not give it to everyone because if it gets shared out, then there goes your security anyways. doesn't matter if the file's encrypted. And then also, see, we're learning a lot about how to actually enhance that even more. We have, uh, what is it called, asymmetric and, and some other different forms mm -hmm. of, of encryption, right? And, and to, to make that even more reliable, I can uh, have various levels of, of, um, of, of rights or privileges so that, for instance, you could only access a certain amount of information Mm -hmm. Or if I have a public key and I do share it, maybe there will be a multi-signature associated with it so that um, you and two other people will probably have to sign on and, 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 and actually allow that information to be read or looked at or analyzed, right? If it's going to be read at all. Maybe it'll be read only, maybe we write only or something like this. So, yeah, we, we're looking at... Um, uh, various ways of enhancing not only when you get that public key because in the Bitcoin space and this is this may be interesting to some of you photographers or different people out there in the Bitcoin space and uh, what, we're, what we're doing in, in those particular areas is we're um, we, we're sharing that public key as he mentioned as Brandon mentioned but also you um, you have to realize that public key can also allow other people to get a very good idea in terms of what we've been doing as far as transact transactions and different things that have been taking place with that key. So yeah, as Brandon mentioned, be, be very careful because we have, um, again, uh, what, what we call a Bitcoin address. Okay, and this could, this could apply to Bitcoin specifically or, or other things as well. When you have a public address and you're publicizing that on the internet, well, even though it's public and even though that's, that's, that's a lot less important than the private key, make sure that you understand that if people analyze enough of transactional information or activity associated with the public key, that just may give them a, a little bit too much information in terms of what I'm doing uh, with, with uh, making purchases or sending, uh, sending messages or whatever I'm doing with that public key. So we got to be very careful in terms of who we give that to, even though it's not an immediate threat, it can be used to analyze you know, some activities and such. Right, and that's what we consider is like, so you guys know, that's like data mining, right? You're understanding what the individual and social engineering them through their habits, their, you know, their shopping habits, and then you might be able to compromise them in that way. You might say, you know, Monty might be shopping at Amazon constantly, and I might call and say, hey, I'm from Amazon. We want to confirm your credit card because we see you do a lot of shopping. What's going through Bitcoin? There's been errors. Can you confirm that? Well, Monty might not be thinking at the time and say, oh, yeah, I use my Bitcoin. I use it, and it's linked this way. But, you know, I, they, I guess they have my credit card because, I know, of course, Bitcoin's a separate, you know, e-commerce solution. But they might catch you off guard where now you're like, oh, Okay, yeah, I have to do this. Okay, yeah, my credit card. Okay, and then you start giving it, not thinking. Now, Brandon, do should we make a distinction between the various types of algorithms that algorithms, that, if you will, as far as uh, what is it, asymmetric and symmetric, and some of the differences? Why would one be an advantage or disadvantage over the other one? Or yeah, because I've got I've got also here in my list to kind of cover, as well as like triple DES, RSA, exactly. Bullfish, AES. So yeah, if you want to cover some uh, asymmetric and symmetric. Right. Um, is, is there any particular reasons why I should be looking at uh, one as compared to the other one as, as, a, as an individual or, or something? Or, or when, do, when, 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 when do I start caring about which one is actually implemented? I think we have to look at data classification too, right? And that's the biggest thing when you come to encryption is you're classifying your data of how much security you really want to put on it. Oh, okay. If it's if for data classification and you're like, you know, you have some Word documents you've been journaling, right? And you're journaling like, oh, I had a great day at work and, you know, my friend did this. And your level of encryption is going to probably be lower. Your classification of security is probably going to be low. Oh. Right? Media might be something like your kids' photos, you know, your vacation photos, things you want to do. High classification might be your company data, your company information, your client's personal identifiable information, financial information, where you know you need to be have like this high level of encryption. So you're gonna look at you know which you know systems you're using 
for that level of encryption and how much. So you might encrypt your, you know, you might have medium encryption or you might using symmetric where it's kind of symmetric is, is, is one way. Asymmetric is, 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 sorry, symmetric is two ways. Asymmetric is one way where you're looking at the different levels of the, the, the encryption of how you really want to encrypt it and to what extent. Because I know some people, are, they're not going to you know, go through the hassle of encrypting their journal, right? They're not going to have 256-bit encryption, double authentication, doing all that for a journal. It's like it's too much of a hassle. But when it comes to financial information or banking information, they're going to want that level of encryption. They're wanting to be doing it over HTTPS, which is an IPsec. They're going to want a level of encryption. They're going to want an asymmetric. They want a double authentication. They're going to want that because... That's the banking information. Can I, can I throw something out there? Sure, sure. Yeah, make sure you guys that you stay curious about this subject. This is very, very important. I was renewing an SSL certificate for, for my own uh, website, right? And I initially got a certificate that was um, not as robust as, as, as it should have been. I think it was probably, uh, they call it TLS. Uh, 1.0 or something basically it used an, an algorithm or a christian scheme that was like brandon said it would it would have been suitable had i not been doing e-commerce for instance right if, if i just had if i had the doctor's office and i'm just setting appointments and, and you go to my website and you can look at information and read information or whatever that maybe wasn't that critical as long as it wasn't patient records or whatever but but then see with my bits we really do need a robust um certificate right so i upgrade to uh tls 2.0 it's a transport layer you know it, it's just a basically a way the industry defines um how how, how much security you ultimately are going to get you know if you if you want to do e-commerce e-commerce and you need to protect credit card information and such then you need tls uh, 2.0 uh, minimum and uh that's where the industry is and see don't hesitate also to click on with the, the little lock that you see over on the left hand side when you're shopping it should turn green when you're in a secure session where you can actually shop so don't hesitate to click on it and take a look at that information and I, you know i did the same thing and some of it can be quite intimidating but click on it look at the uh, information and if you have any questions call brandon or, or, or call the provider and ask them you know what what am what am i Am I really protected for shopping on this site or, or not? You know, is this secure or not? Uh, you know, does this um, uh, company, is it the same company that, that I think I'm dealing with or, you know, whatever, right? But yeah, these are some things that we want to make sure that we get some hands-on experience with and start to familiarize ourselves with because as, as we're looking for encryption, as we're looking for secure sites and sites to shop on, we really want to know what we're looking at and, and why it's safe to be also, what do you think about that? Well, the one thing that you have to look at is the difference between TLS and SSL. Okay. All right. Right. Uh, transport layer security and secure socket layer. Right? right. What happens is the technology keeps doing one of these. It go one goes up, one goes down. They keep kind of juggling spaces that one's more secure than the other. So when we're looking at TLS, I right, transport layer security, like Monty said, the old version TLS is a little bit older than SSL. Right, secure so here. Right. Hey, Sorry. Robert. <laughs> so, what you're going to look at right now is that when you're going to different layers of authentication and secure browsing, you want to look at when you're securing your site and you're having secure browsing, what's the latest version that's out there? Right, and making sure you're up to date, especially if you're hosting a website doing financial e commerce, you want to make sure that you're up to the, the, latest, the latest standard. And that's what we're talking about, a level of secure surfing and encryption is how to do that. So that's something to look at. And, and it's a great point, Monty, is, I mean, you got to look at your encryption. you got to look at your tools. Some are getting outdated. And, that, and we'll talk about some of the standards out there. You've got triple DAS, RSA, you got Blowfish, you got e -A -E -A 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 -E -S, right, are all different forms of encryption standards, right? Right now, what they're people are really talking about is e, e or AES, which is Advanced Encryption Standards. And that one is goes from either from 128 to 192, 256-bit encryption. So that one's one that's now really kind of being advertised as, as the better form of encryption. 
And there's lots of tools out there. I mean, when I, I was looking to kind of see for what just basic users should be able to use at their conveniences, one is uh, Folder Lock is a, is a, or yeah, Folder Lock is a good application. Also, 7up, so the number 7 in UP is a free application that people can use, which then uses a high level of encryption. Right? So you can use them. They, they support AES encryption of your files. So something very easy to use and as you're zipping or zipping or securing your files, you, it'll give you the option to encrypt them. And this is where you can use it very easy. And this is why we wanted to talk about today is how to use it. So give you a little bit of the foundation of you know encryption. Why is it used? What's it all about? What's you know what's the definitions? What's the information? But you know how do you use it? Right? And I think that's kind of where we want to kind of go to now, Monty. Is you know what's the best way to use it? And I'd like to ask Robert. Robert, you know, do you use encryption? Uh, Robert is asking, does the receiver need the program to open? Yeah, so what happens is you're going to need some sort of, like, so, for example, you have, uh, like, we'll use WinZip, which is a commonly known, you know, uh, compression file system, right? So if you have some sort of, you know, application that will, you know, unzip the file, most of those ones will have then a username and password that will pop up and say, okay, what's the, what's the you know, the public key? What's the public password? Right? And then what happens is you have that, then you're able to do it. Now, I know Windows has their own, you know, BitLocker and all that application that, you know, you can unzip a file and then a password will pop up. So ne not necessarily, but I recommend you ha everyone, you know, who's watching this, right? You know, so like you're, uh, Robert's just talking about Winmar or Adobe. Exactly. As long as it has, you know, the latest, you know, level of encryption that it's using, it's you're able to encrypt it, you know, 16 characters long. You're able to use AES standards. Yes, I mean, I have no problem with it. As long as you test it out, right? you test it out, it works, encrypts it, and you're able to send it off, and, and you use the, the process that we were talking about earlier is that you have a secure password, a secure phase, uh, phrase that's at least you know 16 characters long, capitals, lowercase, uppercase, special characters. Right? You keep that you know key or, or phrase secure that only the people that you want to have access to have access to it. And then on top of that, you're using an application that will be able to transfer it over that it compresses it so that the other individual is able to use it. Because if it's like seven uh, seven up and they have their own standard, I think it's dot seven U, I think it is the file format. Well, if you send that over to someone like Robert and he has WinZip, he might not be able to open it. So you gotta make sure the standard of the file format is transferable to the to the people that you want to be able to read it. Well, this is uh, very important because uh, in the most practical sense, and I'm gonna leave it up to Brandon to get more into the really, really technical aspects because when you guys play this back, you wanna, you wanna, you want the best of both worlds. See, and 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 and, and speaking of the real world, there's a company, little-known company by the name of J.P. Morgan Chase. They um, had a major breach, right? Where where, all, where tons of customer uh, information was um, hacked into and, and 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 put out there on the internet. And see, when you're dealing with a major institution like J.P. Morgan Chase, a banking company, basically, um, and they fail to implement the proper uh, security protocols, we know that this is a very serious issue. See, they should have been able to really afford to, 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 to protect that information and make absolutely sure that it was encrypted so that, you know, if someone tried to get into it, they'd, they'd actually be looking at getting nothing from them. So, yeah, let's keep in mind that databases of customer information, that's what I'm going to put the emphasis on. When we have a, a database of information that's just left there unencrypted, now that's an inviting target for the hackers. So if, if we can make sure, first of all, that we, we, we take that data and protect it, and hopefully uh, we'll get to the point where we're managing our own information, right? So that if someone wants information, they literally have to come to us, hopefully, and at some point and get it from us. Apple, for instance, is taking a look at and have been one of the pioneers in terms of making sure that if you want to get access to my phone, my iCloud, my data, you go to the customer, right? You don't go to Apple because they're trying to shift the liability. That's basically what we're talking about. Where is the liability ultimately going to be? So as we get these tools, we want to make sure that we put them in place so that I can interact with Brandon and we are going to be responsible for our data and we would have choices as far as how we're going to use whatever particular 
um, mechanisms that we want to use to secure our data. Exactly. I mean, and this is what you have to look at when you do data, data classification is what data do you need to encrypt? And, I mean, if you don't understand how to classify your data, have an outside party start to help you with an assessment to say, okay, you know what? Here's level of data classifications. Where does that data fit? Does it fit low, medium, or high? And then once you start to classify your data, then you start to realize, ooh, I got to secure that a little bit more. I didn't think maybe I thought that was low, but now it's actually medium. Or maybe I thought that was low and it was actually high. Right. And I, now you have to classify it because you maybe thought, you know, your level of security, your level of uh, protection was there. But now you got to look at putting in an extra layer of encryption on the data that if a hacker gets in through your system, they get to a point where they can't breach anymore or, or it's extremely difficult for them to get through. Right. And that's where you have the time where, you know, if you're a company and a company standard of a breach, they, so they get through your website. They get into your, you know, say you have a WordPress, and I'll use this scenario. So you have a WordPress site. It hasn't been updated in a while, and they compromise WordPress. They compromise a plugin, and they get into the back end. Well, now they're in the back end, but if you don't have, like, use iThemes or something along that line that's securing the back end username, the back end passwords, you know, your, your database, and you're not securing that, then what happens is they'll walk right through your site. And say you have members in there, and now and maybe you have financial information because it's a membership site. They're right in there, and now what happens is you're completely been breached. But if you can encrypt it to that level where maybe they got in through a plugin, maybe they got into a certain point, and you have the bells and, and whistles coming off, that an alert saying, hey, someone's in there. Now you can go in, you can lock them out, you can block their IP address, you can do all that, and they didn't get to the point where they completely breached you. Yeah, they got to your, your website, a little bit of a frustration, but at least it didn't compromise to the point where now there could be content, information, data that's out there, now you can potentially be sued, right? And it's the thing we, we think we talk about, Monty all and I talk about, it's not the sense of you'll never be hacked. Two different types of people, ones that know they've been hacked and ones that have been hacked and don't know they've been hacked. That's really when it comes down to security. Majority of people out there and security professionals will, will, will contest to this. Majority of people are fit into one of those two columns. People that know they've been hacked and are protecting and doing all their access, all their security and doing that. And people don't know they've been hacked and are being hacked currently as we're speaking and just kind of go in their day to day you know, activities. Now, I'm going to I'm introducing a subject that I want you guys to make sure you understand the big picture in terms of why this is so important, because going forward uh, and Silicon Valley is spending a lot of financial and human resources in terms of trying to make sure that we understand that our identities our profiles and, and reputations and such, that's all we really have. Because you think about it, you go onto Facebooks and the Twitters and the, and the various Google Hangout sites or whatever, you are the you are their product. But you're not just a customer, you are the product. And when they take your personal profile, all the vacation spots that you've been to, all of the things that you're tweeting and chatting and sharing about, even the GPS location information, all of this is very critical for marketing purposes, right? So at some point, we need to realize that is a very valuable asset. And, and believe it or not, a lot of people in Silicon Valley are looking into what do we do to harness and take back our information and put it under lock and key. Again, when we talk about encryption and such, and this blockchain technology seems to be such that it really seems to be very, very ideal for implementing in very different ways, for very different purposes, very, very different purposes, right? It all depends on how we want to use it. But one of the critical areas that we're looking at because of because it's so robust as far as encryption is concerned, we're, we're thinking about can we put our personal information in the blockchain or, or use that encryption mechanism to, to, to keep it protected so that as Brandon, let, let, for instance, let's say he wants uh, to get to know me and I, and I give him a certain amount of access, like a rights and privileges with a Windows-based computer, right? Initially, you, you, you'll get access to, again, a, a, a summary of, of, of who I am, what I'm all about, as I get to know him as a business partner or a friend, get access to a little bit more information. Then if we're a business partner, we're actually doing business together or something like that, and maybe he'll get access to even more critical information about me. So let's, let's take into consideration that these are very valuable assets. We don't need to just randomly give them out to complete strangers for the sake of socializing and, and, and meeting people and all these other things. 
that that's that's where we are. And once it's compromised, it's gone. It's out there in the public, and we can't take it back. It's true, and I think what we have to look at is data mining, da data analytics. Is that what companies are doing? Is they're data mining everything you do, from your geographic locations to where you shop, where you purchase, what you look at. You know, your they're caching all your internet history and your browsing, what you're doing, and they're making a profile of these people on a micro level and a macro level, so they know what to market, what to build, what to do. Like it's just evolution, right? And they're collecting all this data as they're doing it and they know that more people are on Twitter and they're talking about, you know, the Alberta fires and, you know, BC and, you know, and Fort McMurray and all the fires they are talking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about fire suppression, fire alarms. We're going to, you know, talk about UNICEF. We're going to talk about all that stuff right now. And you're going to see ads about that. All that comes from data mining. So that's why, you know, we want to look at, you know, overall, and I mean, we're going to be ending the show in about nine minutes is really at the end of the day is you're trying to protect your data. Right, you're trying to protect your information. That is something scary out there. This is this is some of the leading edge stuff as far as data mining. There is a company called um, what is it called? Silver Silver Push, I think it's called. What they're actually doing is for Android users, they're actually um, install allowing you to install an app on your phone. It's going to literally turn on the microphone. So that as you go about um, your daily activities, this phone, micro, this, this microphone on your Android phone is going to be turned on. And it's going to be listening to, for instance, your television or various other conversations, and it's going to bring ads in front of you <laughs> based upon what it heard in the background. And believe it or not, you're going to see certain things popping up or you know running in the course of you browsing the internet or whatever you're doing, and you're going to think, wow, that's kind of interesting. All of a sudden, you know, these things that I'm interested in are being displayed on my i on my phone and my laptop and desktop and such. That's because, again, that information is very critical to marketers and such. And now they're going way beyond what they really should be doing because this is actually a, a violation of our privacy and is being looked into. But this is just an example of how important that information is and how marketers are just running with it in their trying to exploit it as soon as possible before the regulators can, or legislators can come in and stop it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it just, it's the evolution of, uh, uh, you know, what we're looking at, where, who controls the data, who controls our information, and where do we draw the line as, you know, professionals, you know, I've, where do I want to say, here's a line of what I want to protect and how do I do it? And then even when you put encryption onto your data, and your information, that puts that level of protection that now they can't get access to, right? So when you look at secure surfing, you're looking at you know you secure uh, surfing through HTTPS, you know encrypting your data that you're sharing through online, maybe through your colleagues or friends, that is starting to protect your data. Especially when we look at the evolution of technology, we're always connected, right? You're connected in some way. So having that level of security. Now, I know we're, we're finishing up uh, pretty soon. Uh, I don't know if Robert has any other questions. So, Monty, before we finish up, what is, you know, what's some tips that you want to give people about encryption? Well, I just want to make sure that you guys understand this is not a trivial issue because in the iPhone case, for instance, when the um, FBI convinced everyone that, you know, we should compromise only this particular phone and only get access to this data on this particular phone, that really runs counter to the way encryption works, okay? When you have strong encryption, you can't selectively compromise or create a backdoor just for this person or that group or this agency or something, right? It's a, it's, it's a watering down of encryption overall. So, uh, and believe it or not, see, the uh, federal agents, um, other government employees, our friends, our relatives, our associates, when they use these compromised devices, their lives are put in jeopardy. If, if I'm an FBI agent and the FBI decides to hack into this particular model phone, find a, find a vulnerability and not disclose it to the public, guess what? All of those agents, all of those federal employees, their phones, their relatives and associates who use that, that phone, that model phone, their privacy is going to be in jeopardy. Okay, their lives are going to be in jeopardy because, again, there's a vulnerability that no one wants to talk about, no one wants to fix immediately because you know, our government, unfortunately, in that case, is trying to convince us that it's 
it's it's something that they need to use to to, to help protect us. But so we so we have to really be serious about encryption. Either you're going to have strong encryption, or you're going to have encryption that basically doesn't do very much for any of us. So let's make sure that we understand that we need to get behind this and and, and use it and employ it and and and, and not have backdoors, not have compromises, and and. Um, and, and, be a, and, and, and I guess the cyber literacy word for today is, 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 is going to be um, what you do choose it for today. <laughs> it be- well, the cyber literacy today should be encryption. That, that's it. Okay. Encryption, right? Because what happens is I think what happened for me, just kind of the finalized kind of the last couple of minutes is that look at doing an analysis of your data, like having kind of an assessment of, you know, classifying your data, classifying your information. Right. A lot of people don't do it because we're too busy. Right? And, and confidentiality, the CIA of security, confidentiality, data integrity, and availability, what they're looking at is the availability. I don't want to encrypt my data because then it's not available. Right? It's not available to be accessed easily. And and it's, you know, it's I can go on the cloud service, I have it, you know, Dropbox or iCloud or something, and I can easily go there and it's not, you know, it's not secure. And I could just I don't have to keep putting passwords each time. I don't have to keep remembering it. Right? And we would look at the availability, but we look at this convenience as, you know, open to anyone. If it's convenient for you to easily access it and very, it's very available, well, so is it a hacker. And if a hacker gets into that system, they can walk through anything that's in plain text, anything that's open, and be able to get access. To it. What happens when it's encrypted? They have to spend more time, right? And the level of encryption, the more time they have to spend. And like Monty Singh, some of them are, you know, you look at the years. It takes to decrypt one of the files of, you know, trying to penetrate or hack it and get through it. Some of them are hundreds of years, right, to try to get through it. So we got uh, Robert. Beth, we got three minutes, Robert. We'll get you in. You had a quick question. Before I forget, uh, Brandon, you mentioned something about tagging. You want to cover that now or after the fact? Tagging. We'll, we'll get Robert. Uh, Robert's coming in to ask a question. Hey, Robert. Just, just real quick, um, yeah. to your point, if I'm using, like, Microsoft, Office 365 and their cloud to kind of house some things opposed to Dropbox. Is that is that kind of a safe thing or do I need to rethink that and, and lock that down as well? Lock that down as well. Because remember, Microsoft has their breaches as well. I was at a Microsoft store last week speaking at, at their event and they were talking about their level of encryption is military grade. But again, they, they have breaches that, you know, they don't really want to make public, but they get compromised as well. So you got to look at our responsibilities back on us, that we're putting a level of encryption. So if they get breached, our plain text documents are secure. Right? Okay. And that's why we're saying, what well, you want to take that, that extra step. And then, I don't know, what, what do you do, Robert? You know, it's pertinent. I'm I'm a mortgage banker, so I deal a lot with people's, you know, tax returns, pay stubs. However... Uh, after I'm through with a, a transaction, you know, we get rid of those things and they're stored. I don't, I don't keep any uh, pertinent information, you know, past the closing of a loan, you know, right. like tax returns, things of that nature. I kind of get rid of that. But uh, how do you, we, how do you get rid of that? You know what, man? <laughs> you know, I'm deleting stuff. So I, you know, is that not getting rid of it? Well, that's what you got to look at because you know, if you have it on your hard drive, and here's mm-hmm. something we'll kind of go a little bit into just quickly. If you have it on your drive, it has an image. Right? It has a layer. You might delete it, but doesn't scrub completely from the hard drive. So okay. if I have a, a hard drive reader to you know to pull that information, I can pull that out. Because again, you think of it, think of it this way. And this is one when someone told me about it, it was really kind of like a, it blew my mind. Get a notepad, right? Get a notepad and write on the first piece of paper. It you know, through. date all that goes through, right? But you pull it off, you don't see it. But if I take a pencil and just mm. color over it. Now I can see the outline of what you wrote. Gotcha. That's the same thing as the, the disk drive. It's the same thing as they, as they pull it off. So when you, when you delete it, it's not actually completely deleted. You know, it's deleted from the convenience of you getting it, but it's not completely deleted from the hard drive unless you destroy that hard drive. Let me throw something in there real fast. Remember that Ashley Madison case, uh, Robert? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was all about information that could have been deleted, but out of convenience, for Ashley Madison for recurring billing and such, they decided to keep it, right? Mm-hmm. When the hackers came in and compromised the system and stole all the credit card information, in addition to a lot of other information, that became a liability, right? So we got to remember that uh, that's toxic. 
okay? Literally, data is toxic. And if you treat it like, <laughs> like, a, like a, something that's actually toxic, remember, that, that's an issue, right? So mm -hmm. whoever has the data <laughs> is, 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 is accepting a, a lot of responsibility. And if you can offload that somehow, then you're in a much better position, you know? Even if I'm, even if I'm accessing the data from a cloud-based type situ situation, so I'm never pulling it down locally, I'm always in the cloud, that still is going to leave an imprint or some type of something on a hard drive? Is that what you're saying, guys? Well, because you, you're, using, you're using Office 365, right? Well, that's what I use to kind of house uh, files after they're closed. But the way we're set up, I mean, we have an offline server type situation. So I'm not, when people send me stuff, it's uploaded to the cloud. I'm working on it from the cloud type environment. Okay. Remember this, Robert. What happens mm -hmm. is you're working from the cloud, but the application's making uh, temporary Connection. files. Well, no, but it's making temporary files locally. Gotcha. Okay. Right. It's storing like so. Word, for example, has a, a directory where you have your temp folder. Where right. if you're working a file and it crashes, you can pull from the temp folder, right? Gotcha. gotcha. So what happens? Yes, the the storage unit is the cloud. But as you're working on the data, the data is being worked locally. As you're doing it, because you're, you're doing it on your, your PC, your laptop, whatever that may be, and that temp file is being stored as you're working on it. So with that said, because I know you said three minutes and I don't want to eat up all your time. No, uh, is, is there a solution for that, Matt, where I can actually delete something? Can you, because a lot of people probably think they're deleting things and yeah. they're not deleting. I mean, or is there not a way to really delete you can delete, you can do a higher level of scrubbing and deleting as you kind of look at different tools. What I would also say is your temp folder and the areas that you're working on your file, encrypt that folder. Okay. Encrypt that whole folder. Because what happens is if that folder is encrypted on your hard drive and it's deleted and it's, it's still on the level of encryption, if mm -hmm. someone tries to scrub your hard drive and get it, the data is still encrypted. Gotcha. So, so even if they pull it up, they can't get access to it because it's encrypted. Got you. So that's that extra layer. That's some good stuff, man. I didn't even, you know, this is good, good, good stuff. Thank you. And that's what I'm saying. Just kind of look at that level because I, like you're saying, you're dealing with financial information. You're dealing with things that, you know, are private to people, but you might be working on it thinking, hey, it's over here. The responsibility is up there. But don't realize that we're accountable too because we're using the data and the client is dealing, working with you, not the cloud. So they're not going to go after the cloud saying, oh, no. you know, Robert's good. Thanks, Robert. Yeah. But the cloud, damn you, cloud. They're going to go, Robert, you were working on my mortgage. What did you do? Right? Yeah, they always How follow the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, and that's what Monty's saying, which I agree with him, is that we take responsibility when we're working with people's private information that we have to have that level of security. And sometimes our companies don't even know. They're behind. They're like, oh, yeah, the cloud, it's 128-bit encryption. Don't worry about it. But they don't realize how you're using the data. They haven't done the full analysis. So you mentioned Seven Up. Is there another one that you mentioned yeah. that you like? Yeah, I did Seven Up, and there was Folder Lock. Folder Lock, okay. Yeah, Folder Lock's a good one. You could use WinZip as well. There's all different ones that are out there. Uh, I know you were talking about you used Adobe and, and the different ones, but yeah, as long as it can encrypt the folder, even Microsoft has its own. I think it's BitLock. Right, okay. they have their own. Again, anything that can encrypt it, and then, like I said, uh, I think it's Nate was talking about uh, uh, DES, triple yeah, triple DS standard or AES standards. Just make sure it has that level of encryption, and then you have a secure passphrase. It's not, hey, password or one, two, three, nah. four. <laughs> nah, yeah, I've, 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 you know, and like you said, it, it gets a, it's a responsibility, right? So, I've tried to put together a program because. Man, I, I got a ton of passwords. They just accumulate. Right. But uh, I try to make sure I go through different characters. And so I have to have a sheet where I go to because I don't remember them. Exactly. But, uh, you shouldn't remember. Remember, I don't know if you missed this at the start. In this day and age, you should not remember your passwords. You should never remember them. They should be in a secure area. Most of my clients have a secure USB or flash drive, which okay, they, have a a text they have a text document. Right? They okay. have a text document or Excel cell sheet that they've encrypted. So they plug that in. Right, they type in the username and password to get into the the flash drive. Then the, the Excel spreadsheet has a username and password. They get into that, and then it has a list: website, username, password, website, username, password. And they're all different, 16 characters long. You know, very very difficult. And what happens is they should remember because if you remember it, there's a potential I can socially engineer it. Gotcha.
Gotcha. And so that what, last thing, man. So these uh, pass these password saver things. I don't do them, but that's not a bad idea. That's a bad idea on these browsers, right? So you don't. So you can conveniently get in. Think of it this way: if your browser is storing the username and password, it's stored in the cache somewhere in the settings. Well, if that browser gets compromised, now I get access to all your passwords that you've saved, and Crazy. which could be your banking information, where people are going, oh. My email, my my banking, my Facebook account, you know, Twitter and all this. I'll just save it. And I'll just like yes, save my password for next time. Save, save, save. Then you go through the database and you realize they're all the password this person does on a frequent basis. Their banking, their their Facebook, their social sites, all that. And now I have like the God account where I can get the access to everything. So with that said, like with these platforms that we're on, like Blab. Where they want mm -hmm. you to sign it through a Twitter or something like that. That's not a good look, right? You should always do the email thing, right? You could, but you got to look at your social site should be something that's generic. Okay. It's not something you're going to make, you know, you're going to secure them, but it should be secure enough that you can do that. And you've, you know, you can look at what's the, what's the data, the data when it comes down to social sites is your list. Okay. If you can protect your list, you can bring them down into an email list and you have secure username, passwords, email address, or first name, last name, email address. That's the data. The content that you're posting out is public information. Once it's out there, it's out there. You're not really about, worried about securing that. So the passwords for your social sites should be something that is secure in each of the domains, but not too worried that if it gets breached, you're not kind of like, okay, well, you know, it's the end of the world. You okay. want to make sure that you secure them enough that it's it's a high level security. That's sixteen characters. Some of them you can use double authentication as well, where they that's what I've been doing. Yeah, right. So they text you actually a code, and then right. you actually you you type that in. So it's your password and the double authentication. Mm -hmm. So doing all that will secure that as you get access. And then what happens? For example, Twitter, you can go through all the applications that have access and remove the ones that you you know you might have gave access because at that point in time. Then you remove them and you have a, a, a safe list that you know blabs okay you know what if they get compromised they go on my twitter i'll just reset the password everything's good i'll remove blab from the the, the approved list and gotcha. then i get you know twitter's all fine again within the application like you said within twitter or facebook go to apps and delete stuff that you don't know cool yeah okay thank yes, you gentlemen those apps, yeah are, are gonna be a low a very low priority and um also brandon Regarding that email that we typically are, are going to save as a last resort, if I can't get into the Twitter, if I can't get into this particular uh, that particular social site, a lot of a lot of times we use ultimately as a backup where the company sends us that password reset option by way of that email. So can you speak just a little bit in terms of why we need to make absolutely sure that that's a strong area of protection as well in terms of how we use that email? Well, you think about that is in Facebook had a bad, really bad system at one point in time when it had a password. What happened was how the people were breaching Facebook at one point in time is they were creating three different profiles. So I would create three different profiles. I would have Monty's face. I had Robert's face. I had my face. And then I would go to, you know, subject number three, like four, and we'll call her Jane. I go to Jane and I try to add her as a friend. But what happened was I would go through a password reset and pick her most three common friends. And what happens Ooh. is through that password policy now, then I can put in my email address, not hers. I can put in my email address to send out that, you know, authentication to reset my password because I forgot my password. Now what happened was now I've got authentication. I've got the password. I know her email address and now I'm in, right? So what Monty's saying is, yeah, we want, want to make sure that area is secure because again, most people use a generic password for all their sites. And if Twitter or one of them get compromised and someone gets in, well, they have that now email address. Well, that email address, now I can go to different sites and say, oh, I need a password set. Here you go. Here's this email address. Or I can call the company when some people in social engineering and say, hi, this was my old email address. But, you know, I changed it to this email address because I've moved. I've done this. I changed companies. Can you now reset? Now, through social engineering, people go in the company. And Monty talked about this earlier that, oh, you validated at least you know the email address. So you must be someone that knows this. Sure, we'll reset the, the email address and we'll send you out the authentication code to reset your password. All right? So make sure that all these areas are secure because these are areas of breaches and compromises. Got you. Got you. Crazy, huh? Man, you know, everybody wants it easy. Um, 
but there's some level of accountability that you have to have. So I'm going to redo some stuff today, man. You got me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, the great thing is this is uh, Robert and, and anyone that's watching us right now, I've actually go to my website, knssconsulting.com. I have, I have a, a security area for you guys to ask any questions as well as you can go on there and join the group. There's a membership area where now, you know, cause I know smaller companies can't afford big security consultations, right? They can't afford, you know, thousands of dollars. I made it very cost effective that you can go in, there's a security team in there, you can ask ask questions and in real time get your responses back that now you have security support. Because our goal and Monty's goal and my goal out there is to educate and help people as much as possible because we know breach of security is such an essential part of people's lives now. And just one last thing, Robert. We talked about physical security a lot in these blasts and we talked about also um, the idea of um, cybersecurity, right? You got the, got the virtual, then you got the real world, right? What we're trying to do is we're trying to bring both of them together so that you can understand, look, your friends, your relatives, your associates, your wife, your, your whoever, all the people that you in, interact with, they're potential targets, right? So we, we need to make absolutely sure that we get this big picture perspective. And Brandon's gonna help you and everyone else, you guys. And he's gonna make absolutely sure that we take a look at the big framework all the relationship because if your if your wife is 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 if, if you take for granted what she's doing with her phone and her equipment her devices and, and and conversations about what you do or whatever that's a potential issue right so yeah let's keep in mind that we want to we want a holistic approach if you will, in terms of why 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 it's important to consider all of the various interactions with their personal and business life because that's what hackers are looking at nowadays they're looking at the fact that encryption is very very tough hardware is very very secure but people, unfortunately, are becoming the target, the weak link in the chain. Bad habits. Exactly. <laughs> oh, exactly. well, but it's not even just bad habits. Sometimes it's just busy lifestyle, busy mind, mm -hmm. right? And you might not think, like I said, Robert, like I might call you and say, hey, I'm from your service provider, your, your phone, your internet. You might not think and I say, oh, I just want to do a customer service call uh, just before we do this call, just to confirm some confidentiality for your account. What's your date of birth? What's your email address? What's your, you know, your your account number? And you'll go and you'll give it to me because you're like, oh my god, I'm in between meetings, and you'll give that to me. And I said, okay, yeah, we just wanted to let you know your bill is fine. There was a little problem with your your network connection. We fixed that now, and you're up and going. You're like, oh, perfect, thank you so much. And then we hang up. But guess what? You just got profiled, and I got all your information, and you weren't thinking. It's not that you don't know security. It's just you yeah. got caught off guard. Yeah, no, I'm not that dude, man. I'm no Monty too much, man. I don't talk to nobody. So <laughs> if I'm not calling you, it ain't real. So. Exactly. I don't want to make you guys too paranoid. You know, I want right, to right. I'm already paranoid, man. <laughs> I think you know, I was reading something the other day about we're we're in a code yellow society, you know, <laughs> where where everybody <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, that's that's not good for you. We don't right. we don't want to do that to you. <laughs> no. But no, awesome, hey guys, guys, let me let you go, man. Thank you. Thank you. You're right. welcome, Robert. No, don't forget, guys, so, uh, follow Monty, follow myself for the next blab that's coming up. Uh, right. We're going to actually give some good tips. Like, I mean, if you haven't seen the last 18 episodes, make sure you go check them out on my website. They're actually on the blog. The recordings are there. Monty actually plays them through the week as well. As you yeah. want to, if you want, you're, you're surfing around blab, Monty actually re does the replays. Uh, again, if you go to my website, uh, www.knssconsulting.com, the link's in the, the chat there, you'll actually see the whole blog of all the last episodes and, and a little bit of a write-up for each. Now, Monty, what do you want to cover next week? Let's see. Next week, um, the, the, we did encryption. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I'm, I'm at a loss for some reason. I don't know what area, what you, anything that you think we haven't covered in detail enough. I think we should cover security awareness. I'm finding more and more people, again, when they go out their day, understanding security awareness is something they're lacking. Yeah, uh, they, uh, they get encryption. Yeah, I've got a secure router. But then they're going into a coffee shop and they're doing their banking. Oh, yeah, someone's over my shoulder. Yeah, I'm just going to ignore them. Right? Oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I have my bag open at, at the bank and I have information and people are lining up behind me. So I think what we look at is security awareness of everything that's around our environment. Having our username and passwords on our our, our uh, monitor at our office so anyone can walk by and see them. Yes, right? 
with the mindset that, that we're in on a daily day day to day, day basis. Exactly. And I think security awareness is something we need to talk about because then we're going to be more aware of, ah, okay, hold on. I need to think this way. I need to be more aware, not panicking like everyone's out to get us. And, you know, we need to call 911 every time someone moves, but at least we're aware that, okay, you know, I need to protect my information. I need to protect what's outside there. I need to protect my, you know, my, my desk with all the con uh, personal information. And I can see like Robert works from home, right? In the back end, I can see his router and his switch there. Right, so even that information that might should be pushed to the side a little bit, right? I'm about to put it down. <laughs> you said it. I mean, you you watching everything, man. So I'm gonna put it down. Uh, and I also have an office, man. So don't work from home all the time. But yeah, see, somebody smart like you could figure it out, <laughs> right? So I can take a screen capture of that and then just start social engineering, right? What's wow. what you have, right? So it's things like that, just security awareness, what we're doing. You know, if we're in a coffee shop and we're doing blabs on an ongoing basis, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. All you can see is a dark screen behind Robert from now on. No one can see that's anything. What, that's what you're going to see, man. I'm going to go get a backdrop. It's right. just me. <laughs> you know, there's really nothing wrong with looking at those photos from a user perspective. From my perspective, what does it look like to look at that shot of you in that window? What does it look like, Robert or, or Brandon, to, for me to take a look at those photos that you placed on Facebook? Where, where I can see the identity on your dog's tag, your, the tag of the dog, literally, in, in some situations, mm. you know. Well, let's kind of use a quick example just to kind of prove why security awareness is so important. Right. I can see it has a switch, a modem, and I can see it has a printer. The printer I can look up right now, potentially, and take a picture of it and see if I can find the model. If it has Wi-Fi access and he hasn't secured that, I can compromise that, that printer. Potentially, if I can figure out his network and go through that. And this is just quick social engineering. It's not something I'm talking about, you know, really kind of diving deep in, but even that, just knowing that right now gives me an up on potential Robert's network and where I could breach him. Very good. Industrial espionage, theft of an intellectual property. Um, these are multi-billion dollar industries. And believe it or not, if I can get a competitive edge on you, Robert, as a competitor, how, however I can do it, it's worth it. Trust me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome. So that's what I like to talk about. Next week, what we're going to cover is security awareness, just to kind of, and we get a little bit of a, you know, you know, snapshot here of what, you know, what, how it works and what people are looking for as they're trying to compromise you, just using Robert as an example. But this is what happens day in and day out that you might not even know. Robert, yeah. we talked about it, but he might not even know that I was doing that, right? Unless I said it. And now imagine you're at a coffee shop, you know, you're out and about. People are looking at you as you're, 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 you're texting or you're using your phone, you're putting your secure password, someone's looking over your shoulder. You might not be aware of this. And that's why security awareness is, is really important to be aware of your surroundings, your environment, where you are, what you're connecting to. What's the name of that company that actually you can go online and you can see um, how people are living, leaving the webcams and the, the various other IP based devices, uh, 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 unsecured, Sylvan or Sylvan or something. I think it's Sylvan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that one. If you want, to, really want to get an eye opener, Robert, take a look at it when you get a chance and see um, what it means to actually be able to go to a website and take a look at other companies, other individuals, uh, web-based devices, and take and and and, and what, what it looks like to see, uh, you know, with the, the baby sleeping in the room or or the uh, assisted living care center where where the patients are coming down the hallway and the webcam is unsecured. Um, it, it's really revealing in terms of what we're not doing and, and why it's important to keep that in mind. Mont Monty, you're hitting on some things, man. I know y'all got to go, but, you know, <laughs> there's a reason, you know, even as Logitech, you know, and I did some research, you know, I don't think you could get it. You probably could get in the house, Brandon, but the average cat can't, can't because I do have, I have it locked down. Got a nice modem. But uh, some, we can come out next week. We'll talk about this because next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Trust me, the Logitech is not as secure as you think. No, that's what I'm saying. So I'm I'm saying my my modem into the house. I think it's pretty secure. But I'm gonna do everything that you're talking about, and it's not well. I'm 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 about to hit your website, man. I'm about to call you because <laughs> you got me nervous. <laughs> right. You know what? Let me let me get over here telling all my business because if they got some crooks out there, they gonna know I'm weak. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> all right, Robert. <laughs> Awesome, Monty. That's good. I mean, this is one thing that, I mean, the real ass, you know, the essential aspect of, of doing this show is to help people like Robert that are out there that are, are 
doing what they can. They, they've had a level of security. They've done some, a, a level of education that they hope that, you know, they're, they're secure. And then talking to someone that maybe is a little bit more advanced, they kind of realize, wow, okay, there's more I can do. There's more I, I have to implement. And it's not a bad thing. It's just keeping sure. them up to date because as we know, as security experts, it's always changing. It's always evolving. There's always something new. There's always better ways to do things. Oh, sure. And the courses that run in our business, you know, we, we want to make the next sale, uh, seal the next deal, or, or, or take care of the next customer-related issue, right? We're putting these fires out. And we're going through the normal course of our, running our businesses. But, yeah, every once in a while, let's step back. And let's try to figure out, okay, what is actually going on with, with how I look from the perspective of somebody who wants to compromise my security, my privacy, my customer data, et cetera, et cetera. Because, you know, you could actually be put out of business, unfortunately, and be held liable uh, <clears throat> under uh, certain circumstances where we're not doing enough. And that's what the big bank Trump bankers or the you know, big banking companies and the credit card issuers and such are, are looking at. Where do we shift the liability onto the next person? And we don't want to be that next person. Exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to end this episode Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you're, you don't miss it. Next week, we're going to talk about security assessments right, and security awareness. So it's going to be, you know, how to do security awareness. So just security awareness training and cybersecurity for you and your business. So make sure you share this out with your friends, your family member. Make sure everyone comes out. So guys, I'd like to thank you for watching this episode. And I'll see you guys next week. Have fun, Brandon.